Hello everyone, welcome back to the class. In today's lecture, we want to finish up the discussion related to consumption and saving. So the topic that we will address today will be addressing the questions below. We are going to ask, is there any more elements we need to know for setting up a model of consumption and savings? For sure, the answer is yes. And the other question we want to ask is, is there any model for describing the consumption and saving decisions? And yes, in this class, we are going to talk about three models. We are going to talk about the Keynesian model of consumption, the facial model, and the life cycle model. So the outline for today is as follows. We will talk about the utility function, which will complete the set that we need to come up with a model. Then we want to derive a very simple version of the model, which is the Keynesian model of consumption. It is a one period model. After that, we are going to move on to talk about facial model, which is a two period model. In this model, we will need all the elements we developed earlier for coming up with the model. We need utility function, we need intertemporal budget constraints, and then we will be able to come up with the decision for consumption and savings. Then under the facial model, we will again look at how the factors affecting the intertemporal budget constraints affecting the consumption and saving decisions. Toward the end of today's lecture, we are going to talk about the life cycle model, which is a model with multiple periods. And we want to describe the consumption and saving behavior under the life cycle pattern. So now let's begin with today's lecture by first look at the utility function. Before we formally introduce the model of consumption, I want to talk about consumption preferences. This is something that you learn in microeconomics, also in the principles of economics. When we want to describe consumers' preferences, we use a term called utility to describe the degree of happiness. So the definition of utility is as follows. We say that utility is used to describe a person's satisfaction or well-being. In microclass, we are talking about how satisfied we are when we choose certain consumption bundles between, for example, apples and oranges. In here, we are talking about the decision related to consumption and savings. Therefore, we use utility to describe a person's preferences about current versus future consumption. And utility will give us a number to tell us how happy an individual is. Therefore, we not only have the utility in equations, in fact, we can also have the graphical presentation to capture the concept of utility. And the graphical presentation for utility is the indifference curve. So under the context of the decision related to consumption and savings, we can have a graphical plot for the utility, which is a set of the indifference curve. And each curve represents all combination of current and future consumption that yields the same level of utility, or you can say the same level of the happiness. Therefore, you can say that an individual will be equally happy on the same curve, thus indifferent to which combination they choose. In other words, under the context of consumption and savings, an individual is indifferent to which combination of the current and the future consumption they choose. Now let's explore the properties of the indifference curve under the context of the consumption and saving decisions. Because of that, the goods we choose are related to the current consumption versus future consumption. In this graph, we draw an indifference curve. And on top of this indifference curve, we have two consumption choices. One is point A and the other is point B. The difference between the point A and point B is that for point A, it has higher second period consumption and for point B, it has higher current consumption. So then when we want to switch from point A to B, given that it is on top 
of the same indifference curve. So we know that this individual is equally happy between choosing these two points. But then when we do the move, then it tells us that somehow we need to decrease the consumption for future goods in exchange for an increase in the current consumption. In other words, when we are switching between the point A and B that we are indifferent, that we need to sacrifice something in exchange for the others. Because this property of trade-off and in turn of slope, it is negative. Therefore, this comes the first property of the indifference curve, that is, it is sloping downwards. Now let's explore the property of the indifference curve based on the graph with more than one indifference curve. So in here we have one indifference curve that is U1 and then we can draw another indifference curve which is with the utility that equals U2. Then what will be the utility for the second indifference curve versus the first indifference curve? We know that on top of the first indifference curve, we have point A, and the individual can choose to consume C1 and C2. Then there is another point on top of the second indifference curve, which switches point B. If an individual can choose this point, it means that this individual consumes the same amount in the first period, but can consume more in the second period. Therefore, it means that this individual is happier. In terms of the utility, the number should be higher. We can also see another point on top of the second indifference curve, which is C. For this point, it has the same second period consumption, but higher first period consumption. So same thing in here that compare point A and C, we know that given they have the same second period consumption but higher first period consumption so we know that this individual is happier to choose point c than a therefore we know that in terms of the utility the second indifference curve has higher utility than the first indifference curve Therefore, we can conclude the second property of the indifference curve, that is, when we are moving toward the upper right, away from the origin, then the utility is higher. Now we want to explore the third property of the indifference curve. If you may recall from your class microeconomics, we know an indifference curve bound toward the origin. And under the context of the model for consumption and saving, this feature somehow reveal an important feature for the consumption saving decision, that is consumption smoothing. And we want to show why that is the case. So we have two points on top of this indifference curve. And we know that they are equally happy because they are on the same indifference curve then we can assume that for point B, it consumes one unit in the first period and two units in the second period. For point C, it consumes two units in the first period and one unit in the second period, such that even though that for point B, it consumes more in the second period and for point C, it consumes more in the first period, they are equally happy. So then when the indifference curve bow toward the origin, we know that there should exist a point that is between B and C that crossing the 45 degree line. When it crosses the 45 degree line, it means that an individual can choose a consumption bundle that somehow is closer to consume equal amount between the first period and the second periods. And when we can find a point like that, which is for example M, that is, we can say it is C1 equals C2, so somehow it implies that the first period consumption and the second period consumption are roughly the same. Then for this point, we know that it somehow falls on the curve that is above the original indifference curve. And so it implies that the individual is happier because now it has its consumption smoothed across time. So then for this new indifference curve, we know it has higher utility. So we then can imply that when the indifference curve bowed toward the origin, then 
it implies the property of consumption smoothing because when we smooth the consumption between two points on top of the same indifference curve, somehow we can always find a new combination that is with more similar consumption across time but with higher utility. So these are the three properties of the indifference curve under the context of the consumption and saving decisions. So let me conclude it in here. We say that the first property of the indifference curve is that it slopes downward. Under the context of the consumption and saving decisions, it implies the trade-off between the first period consumption and the second period consumption. The second property of the indifference curve is that we know up to the right of the graph represents a higher level of the utility. Finally, we say that the curve about to the origin and it reflects the property of consumption smoothing.